come. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I had an unexpected visit at my office today. Two young women from a Christian sober living facility here in my hometown. I do a Bible study there every Thursday night. I go and minister the word to the women who are recovering, who have chosen to live a sober life, but to live a sober life in Christ. And uh, they brought me a, um, a pizza for lunch today. They just popped in with the pizza. And I had the great and awesome privilege of leading one of them to the Lord today. Praise God. So will you just pray for this one? Three months ago when she got to the house, she was into witchcraft and Satan worship and the dark magics and the occult. And in three months, she has completely turned, renouncing the darkness and instead has chosen his marvelous light. Because that's what his word says, that he takes us from the kingdom of darkness and translates us and moves us into his glorious kingdom of light. And that's exactly what he did today. I was just a mediator of a small prayer, but he has done the work in her. So will you just pray for this young friend of mine to live an abundant life? abundant life in Christ. She is so different and so changed and only the Holy Spirit can do that. So what a day I've had. So when I, I, I'm excited to come and teach you a word today because I am just so excited to be a servant of the most high God. Amen and amen. So I have a message today called Pebble Preach. Not Pebble Beach, but Pebble Preach. Now, here's a perplexing, perplexing problem. How far could you walk in your favorite, most comfortable shoes or boots when you have a pebble or a stone in them? How far can you walk? Great words of wisdom from Muhammad Ali. He said this, It isn't the mountains ahead to climb that wear you out. It's the pebble in your shoe that wears you out. It's the little things that add up. Little pains, little fears, little frictions, little frustrations, little agitations all add up and they really begin to bother you. Well, I have come to this wonderful knowledge that the highest call in my life, I am called to be a teacher for sure. That is the highest ministry call in my life is to minister the gospel of Christ. I'm also a worship leader and I play the piano also a high call on my life. That's also ministry. But my personal life is separated from my, my calls, my ministry calls. The highest call is to pe be a pebble dropper. Mm. That's how I can describe being a pebble dropper believer. I'm not a Bible thumper, never have been, never will be, won't scare somebody into heaven, won't threaten someone out of hell, won't coerce anyone. I just drop pebbles in people's shoes. I had a doctor's appointment with a new doctor last week or week before. And I might have shared this, but it's worth sharing again. So she wanted me to go through all of these new tests, a colonoscopy, a mammogram, uh, an EKG, other oscopies, other grams, whatever they were. And I told her, no. Now, this is just for me. This is not for anybody out there. This is just for Jenny Fister. And I told her, no. She said, why? I, I said this. I want to be surprised at what I die of. <laughs> I just, and I, and I meant it. 
I, I just want to be surprised when I die, when I get on the other side and God says, did you know you died of that? I'm like, no, that's hilarious. I died of that? Because our, he is in control and he knows. And I went on to tell this doctor because she said, but if we know what's going on inside of you, we can maybe give you a longer life. And I looked at her and I said, doctor, my days are numbered. And the Bible says you can't add a breath to your days. No matter what tests you run, when my time is up and I am called to go home to the one who died for me, I'm ready. And I can't add a breath to my days. Do you know that, what, what that was? That was a pebble in her shoe. I'm sure she went home to her husband and said, honey, whoo, did I meet a doozy today? <laughs> and I'm sure she talked at dinner about the pebbles that I had dropped into her shoes. You see, when you drop a pebble in someone's shoe, or if you have a pebble in your own shoe, it troubles you. It's agitating, and it's all you can think about. Every step you take, you think about that pebble, and you can't wait until you can stop and get that pebble out of your shoe. In fact, you want to look in your shoe, and you want to shake it and figure out, what was that in my shoe? Was it a crumb? Was it a stone? What was that in my shoe? And we're all looking to see what's in their shoe. And then you put your shoe back on, and the, the pebble is gone. But while that pebble is there, it's all you can think about. And that's when God spoke to my heart and said, you need to be a pebble dropper. All we need to do is drop pebbles. Now, that could be anything. That could be asking a waitress, how can I pray for you? Pebble. You might tip your waitress a little bit more when she asks why or he asks why. You can say, it's because God loves you. Pebble. It might be letting someone cut in front of you in Walmart and you're happy about it. Pebble. These are all pebbles in the shoe of someone else. And that's what God wanted me to talk to you about today is pebble preaching. So let me show you a few scriptures to give you an understanding of where I'm coming from, where the Holy Spirit led me, okay? So Matthew chapter 2 verse 3 Matthew chapter 2, verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. What did he hear? What had he heard? He heard that there had been one who had been born, Christ the king, king of the Jews. And when Herod heard that, he was troubled. You see, someone put a pebble in Herod's shoe. And all he could think about, all that troubled him, was what he had heard someone say. Pebble dropping. Let me do this one. Acts chapter 17, verse 8. Acts chapter 17, verse 8. And they troubled the crowd. We're talking about Paul and Silas here. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. Paul was dropping pebbles into people's shoes, into the crowds and the rulers of the city so that they were troubled by what he heard. In other words, they had to think about and mull around what he had said. They had to consider his words and contemplate them and meditate on them. And when he said that we heard them and we were troubled, that, my friend, is a good pebble in someone's shoe. Now, I don't drop pebbles in people's shoes to agitate them, but I want them to be troubled in a good way about something that I've said. I want them to have to consider what I've said, a pebble in the shoe. My new doctor, I guarantee you, went home, like I said, and said, honey, she said she wants to be surprised of what she dies of. You see, because the Bible says, I, I only walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear nothing. Death cannot, 
He has taken the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And all that matters is that absent from the body is present with the Lord. Hmm. My days are numbered, can't add a breath to them. My decisions have been made. God knows my decisions, and they align with his perfect will. But she went home thinking about what I said. And then when she told him, I'm sure she told him, you can't, she said, you can't out of breath. Did you know that? Did you know that? Well, I don't think I heard that. Well, I might want to check that out in the Bible and see what the Bible really says that. I don't know what she did, but I know that I dropped a pebble in her shoe. And that's what we're called to do. I don't have to go up to somebody and go, excuse me, do you know Jesus Christ? And I know people who can do that, and there's an anointing on them to do that. I have a friend, and she just she has an anointing on her who can go up to a total stranger and make that kind of statement. Do you know who Jesus is? Are you saved? And by golly, she just leads them to the Lord. But that's her anointing. It's not mine. Mine anointing comes in pebble dropping, and I think that's where most of us are, where we're not standing on the street corner, you know, yelling scriptures and reading the Bible. That is someone else's call, and we're not thumping people over the head with the Bible going, you need to believe, you need to believe, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. No, our job is to be pebble droppers, the subtle, beautiful gentleness of speaking into someone's life. It's powerful. Now the word trouble, when it says that he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him, King Herod, and when it says that they troubled, Paul and Silas troubled the crowds and the rulers of the city. And let me give you one more, Luke 1, 28 and 29. This will kind of clear it up for you. Luke 1, 28 and 29 talking about Mary, Jesus' mother. And having come in, the angel Gabriel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Imagine being a 13 or 14 year old girl and an angel appears to you and he says, you, you, you know all those prophecies like in Micah 5, 2 and Isaiah 9 and Isaiah 53 about there being a, a Messiah and he will be born of a virgin and he will come to you and his name will be Emmanuel and he's coming to save the nation uh, and that virgin uh, is you. <laughs> Can you imagine how troubled she would be at that saying. And that's what it said. She was troubled at his saying. But she received his word because she goes on to write the Magnificat. Highly favored and blessed am I, she says, to, to be the, the bearer of the Messiah. I mean, she writes this beautiful song in Luke chapter 2. She was troubled, and then it said she pondered his words in her heart. Yeah. You see, that's what we want. We want to drop pebbles in people's shoes so that they ponder them in their heart. Because that's what it said. Mary held them and pondered them in her heart. She thought about it all the time, what, this, what pebble this angel Gabriel had dropped in her shoe. And it troubled her, but it troubled her not to reject. It troubled her to receive the word. Praise God. Now, I know that we are not all preachers. We're not all teachers. 
We're not pastors. We're not Sunday school teachers. Some of us are just you know, sitting in the pews. We're part of the congregation, part of the body of Christ. But we've all been given a ministry. The last chapter of Matthew, we know it. Go and make disciples of all men, preaching and teaching them who Jesus is. Oh, it sounds like a daunting task, doesn't it? Until you begin to drop pebbles, and then it becomes easy. It becomes doable. It becomes attainable, and it bears fruit and is beneficial to the one who hears it and to the one who delivers it. Pebble dropping. Pebbles can preach. Oh, I love being a pebble dropper into people's shoes. And it doesn't have to be just unbelievers. You can drop pebbles into believers' shoes. Someone who's discouraged, you drop a pebble of encouragement. Someone who feels depressed, you can drop a pedal of joy, a pebble of joy in their lives. To someone who is just lonely, you can drop a pebble of Jesus not forsaking them in their shoe. You can bake them a cake, dropping a pebble. Bring them a dinner, drop them a pebble. Send them a card, drop the pebble. We can all be pebble droppers. All of us can be pebble droppers. It's not just the high call of my life. It's the highest call we can have is to speak Jesus into someone else's life. We sing a song in our, in our church called I Speak Jesus. It says, um, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus, Jesus in the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, all, all our family, or well, the enemy, Jesus for the ma family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. I've missed the words. But that's what we can lead and leave into others' lives is just speaking Jesus. Listen, just asking someone how you can pray for them is such a powerful pebble. I have seen people's faces, the countenance on their faces change when I ask them, how can I pray? Or let me pray for you now. Not, I'll be praying for you. Yeah, that's a good pebble. But a better pebble is going, let me just pray for you now. And you pray for them. And they go around the rest of the day thinking about that prayer that you prayed. Pebble dropping 101, right? So let me give you another scripture. And I love this a lot. It's John chapter 1, verse 42. John chapter 1, verse 42. When Andrew brought his brother, who's Andrew's brother? Simon, Peter, but Simon. When Andrew brought his brother Simon to meet Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John, or Simon Barjona in some translations. You will be called now, Peter. What does Peter mean? A small stone or pebble. Jesus changed Peter's name to Petra, a Simon's name to Peter, Petra, a small stone or pebble. Now, 
Let me tell you, from what we know of Peter, he was an irritation to a lot of people. Peter was a sanguine. He entered room's mouth first. He was all mouthy with Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'll never. Oh, Lord, I'll forever. Oh, Lord, I'll always. That was Peter. He even irritated Jesus. One time Jesus said, Peter, Satan, get thee behind me. Because Peter, the rock, was an irritant to people in a good way. Peter, everywhere Peter went, everywhere he went, he talked about Jesus. And he spoke Jesus and he lived Jesus and he was a pebble dropper because his very name meant little stone or pebble. Jesus named him so aptly, so beautifully and wonderfully because Jesus knew what Simon was going to be like. He knew the gifting that God had blessed him with, with the ability to speak and the ability to sway with his words. And so Jesus said, Simon, I'm going to call you a pebble. And I'm going to ask you to drop yourself into people's shoes. I'm going to ask you just to be a fisher of men and go for it. How did Peter respond to that? I'm not going to put it up on the screen, but it comes out of 1 Peter chapter 3. And it basically says that we are to give an account for the hope that, you, that is in you, but with gentleness and respect. The same Peter whom Jesus named Petros from Simon to Peter, little stone, little rock, little pebble, that same Peter now says, listen, you have to be ready at all times. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, but with gentleness and respect. You see, Peter honored those words. Oh, he was an irritant. <laughs> he was a pebble in people's shoes. But he did it with gentleness and respect. And he said, I have to be ready to give an account to everyone. I have to be ready at all times to give an account of the hope that I have in me. Talk about a wonderful pebble dropper. Peter was. Peter, the little pebble, the little stone. Huh. I love God's word. And I feel like every time I come on TV, I am dropping pebbles in people's shoes, because I don't know who's watching, whether they are believers and churchgoers, or whether they're uh, unsaved and in hotel rooms or in hospital rooms. We get letters in from people who've been in a hospital room who've watched the show, in jail, in prison, who have watched our show, who are touched by the pebble that we've put in their shoes. We've heard from people on Sunday mornings who are shut-ins who can't go to church and say thank you for your word. That's a pebble. That is a pebble in someone's shoe. We are to share his word with others. We don't have to slam or slay others with God's word. We let the Holy Spirit do the piercing, the prodding, the penetrating, the reproving and the rebuking and the refining. We leave that to the Holy Spirit. And instead of being a Bible thumper, we are to be, and I wrote them, Bible followers, a Bible embracer, 
a Bible studier, a Bible encourager, a Bible counselor, and a Bible comforter. Those precious kinds of people are in short supply. And the world, with or without God, desperately needs pebble droppers. Desperately need us. So if you don't think you can preach a sermon, you can preach a pebble every day. You don't need to preach a huge three-point, I don't even know what a three-point sermon is. I've never done a three-point sermon in my life. I just teach what the Holy Spirit gives me. I mean, this is just a one-page set of notes today. I mean, I don't have much, just a few scriptures on my page and a, and a couple of good words from the Holy Spirit. That's all I have to be a pebble dropper. You don't have to preach three-point sermons. You don't have to be eloquent of speech. You just have to be willing to drop pebbles in people's shoes so that they're constantly thinking about it, maybe a little irritated by it, but they can't wait to find out what's in their shoe and try to get it out. <laughs> That's Pebble Preaching 101. If you do not know this Jesus of whom we speak and teach, will you let us help you find him? Like a young woman today who has turned her life over to the one who loves her, who will never leave her or forsake her, who has painted this beautiful tapestry of her life with his, yours with his, one brushstroke at a time. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brushstroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 26201. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brushstroke at a time.